I want to start to say super inspiring talk from Phil because what he's talking about, we actually lived it fully when we created, a, you know, tried to backend for Intel GPU. So today the talk is about our experience in building a custom backend for Triton. Um, the agenda today is I'm going to talk about a little bit very high level the backend architecture and how we structure our backend to exploit as much the work that OpenAI is doing upstream. I'm going to present some functional results that we have on several different Intel GPUs and talk a little bit about the integration with PyTorch or our backend. Um, we are looking for, you know, optimal performance, so I will introduce a little bit the hardware features that are key to obtain performance in our GPU. Um, I'll show some performance results and then perhaps very importantly, some of the challenges that we have encountered um, to, to, you know, to get the performance of the, of the GPU. So um, we used to have a Triton backend in Intel that generates SPIRV directly, and we change our design to generate LLVM IR instead of SPIRV. Uh, and then, you know, our low-level uh, backend is still, the input language for the low-level backend is still SPIRV, and so we still have to um, essentially translate the LLVM IR to SPIRV. For, to do that, we use the same tool that we use for our SQL compiler, so that's very stable, and it gave us very good performance. Um, because of the structure of the backend, and thanks to the, you know, the work that OpenAI has done to reorganize the entire third-party backend, we've been able to reuse most of the transformation in the Triton IR and even some of the Triton GPU IR with some customization here and there. And um, we have uh, chosen to specialize some of our passes by creating an MLIR dialect, Triton Intel GPU IR, which is similar to what NVIDIA has done to customize their own operation. And I think that's the right direction to try to push, you know, vendor-specific optimization down to the, to the correct level to, to a specialized um, MLIR dialect. Uh, we generate LLVMIR, and uh, instead of generating line uh, assembly, PTX in the case of uh, of uh, NVIDIA, we decided to create a MLIR dialect, which we call Triton Gen IR. Essentially what it does, it gives us a way to abstract the feature of the hardware by generating intrinsics and also specify the exact memory semantics of each of the operations that we generate for the backend, which then in turn gives the LLVM high level optimizer a better chance to understand what's going on and then you know, do optimization at that level. Um, functional results. So we, we are running on uh, pretty much all the Intel uh, GPUs that are present and we're starting also to run into future Intel GPUs. So we have excellent results approaching 99% on the Intel data center GPU Max, which is also known as Ponte Vecchio or PVC GPUs. And the upcoming Intel, Intel Lunar Lake, which is a consumer specific uh, GPU. Uh, we, have, uh, we have been able to adapt all the core test, end-to-end -end PyTorch test that uh, uh, OpenAI runs and, um, and, and run them all on our architecture. We have shipped um, support for uh, Intel GPU through Triton in PyTorch 2.4. And that's, uh, I linked here a blog uh, written by our colleagues that works on PyTorch on how to exploit that. And we're also running all the key PyTorch bench, one three torch bench, again phase, and the team models with uh, results that are basically on par with upstream. So the quality, the functional quality of the, of the port is, is really high. Uh, for our feature exploitation, we, um, you know, our XE core has eight vector unit and also more importantly has eight XMX unit, which are basically a systolic array implementation capable of performing high efficient matrix, matrix multiplication. And so to get good performance for certain Triton operator, in particular the, the dot operator, we do what is done on NVIDIA or also AMD, except that we have to exploit our own implementation through our own um, D pass instruction, which stands for dot product and accumulate historic hardware instruction. Um, one quirk here is that to get good performance for, uh, for this operation, we also need to load the operand of the dot operation efficiently from global memory. And to that, our hardware has specialized hardware instructions, to, to the read instructions, 
which uh, require which uh, we will see later he has the prefetch capability and the lot capability and we'll see later how we are, how that is really important to get good performance um, talking about using software pipeline passes for uh, that that have been created upstream by OpenAI, this is an example this is one example we have we have we have reused the software pipeline infrastructure the existing triton and mlir to inject prefetch operation in our own dialect, the Triton Intel GPU dialect. Um, the idea is very simple. You have a loop and you want to, the loop is doing some load operations and you want to actually prefetch this, the load into cache ahead of the loop. So before the loop, you're going to inject some prefetch instructions and you can prefetch as many iterations ahead of the loop as you want. And this is totally customizable by the Triton Auto Tuner. Uh, the difference between what OpenAI does and what we do here is that we have a, our specialized instruction in the Triton Intel GPU, which load to the block prefetches, and then we use the TT load to do the 2D block loads. This approach gives us very good performance. And here I'm going to present in the next slide a little bit about the performance. But before we talk about that, let's look at the hardware utilization. So these represent the hardware utilization for a gem, a 4K by 4K by 4K matrix uh, gem, gem um, operation in our uh, Ponte Vecchio GPU. The um, curve that you need to pay attention here is the brown one, where it shows that the efficiency reaches 100%. And if you do the same experiment using Intel specialized gem libraries, you're going to obtain similar, similar graphs. So this already tells us, without looking at performance numbers, that our implementation is very efficient compared to the library. And in fact, we can do a study. This is a gem, a BF16 gem across different shapes. Um, what's presented here is the relative performance of the Triton implementation compared to the Intel Gem Specialized Library, where we reach an average of 90%, 90 percent, 90 plus percent in performance compared to the, to the custom library that Intel ships, which is pretty good. And, you know, we, we, we hope that we can actually reach even higher performance than 90, 90 something. So for um, this, sh this slide should be um, challenges. The, the challenge is that Intel Trento backend, as I mentioned before, uh, rely on semantic information that are expressed in the language by using blob pointers. And um, because blob pointers can be translated almost directly to, to the uh, hardware instruction to read from global memory and bring the data into, into cache. But Block pointers are actually an experimental feature in Triton. Over the past year, there used to be a tutorial that exercised block pointer that has been removed. And um, so that constitutes a problem for our backend because we rely on this kind of language features to attain good performance. Um, uh, there is a new feature that Phil already talked about, which are TMA descriptors. So we are currently experimenting with the design of TMA descriptor to figure out if we can translate a program that uses TMA descriptor or something like that, and then internally use block pointers and see if it if it if it actually works. So um, I know OpenAI is actually working on the, on TMA descriptors, and there are different implementations. This is one of the implementation that are uh, that are out there. Um, so first. We, we can show what, what is the difference between the layout in memory between a TMA descriptor and a blob pointer. And uh, we see that almost all the information that are available in the blob pointer are also available in the TMA descriptor, with the exception of block offsets. There are other differences in, 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 uh, in the sense uh, on how you actually use the TMA descriptor versus block pointer. TMA descriptors are created in this implementation on the host while block pointers are created on the device side, so inside the kernel, by calling the make block pointer API. Uh, to advance the block pointer, uh, one can use the TT advance uh, Triton operation, while for TMA descriptor, the offset is advanced using simply arithmetic operation in MLIR. And finally, the load, the load is done using a TT load for the block pointer, and there is an experimental descriptor load for the TMA descriptors. 
So what's really missing here is the block offsets. Um, but fortunately, the block the information about block offset is available on the on the load itself. So I, I don't know if people can can read uh, the um, the MLIR here, but essentially we have we have created a pass in Triton that uh, transforms the code above, which uses TMA descriptor, and the code below, which creates block pointers, by uh, creating a, you know by taking the, the information that is available in the descriptor plus the information that is available on the experimental load for the descriptor, and you know essentially materializing a block pointer for every load that is in, in, the, in the kernel. So what does this tell us that you know, the design of the MNA descriptor is, is, uh, is not so far, it's possible to you know, like translate one to the other. And um, um, we, we have done this experiment, and we were able to get good results for our gem operation without changing much of the, of the back end. And uh, this is work in progress, and we're really looking forward to collaborate with the community and with OpenAI on the design of, you know, uh, you know, a language feature that, that, uh, in my opinion, should be as portable as possible to try to exploit both, you know, these, these particular quirks of the architecture for Intel GPU would be the 2D block load for an NVIDIA GPU, maybe the TMA descriptor, and um, because you know, like people will write kernels. And the last thing that they want to do is having to then customize the kernel for every different vendors, because that requires you know, to, to rewrite your kernel. So it would be very nice to have a, a language feature that is hardware agnostic as much as possible. Finally, um, we have a project on GitHub. We are not in the OpenAI tree, but we have for the project. We keep it up to date. We're essentially up to date with uh, the OpenAI code. And we rebase every or emerge every, you know, so sometimes even several times a week. Um, there is a link over that takes us to, to our fork. Our fork has support for, of course, because we get the code from OpenAI, has support for both NVIDIA, AMD GPU, and it has support for the Intel GPU, GPU in the third party. There are customization in the common code that we have, we have, we have to add. And I think that the next year we're going to be looking forward to try to remove the customization in the common code and, and you know, work with OpenAI and the community to try to make the Triton GPU direct as hardware agnostic as possible and uh, facilitate the creation of, uh, of more of this um, um, support for different kind of backend in, uh, in the Triton community. Thank you very much for uh, your attention.